American Government Lesson 1. The History of the Constitution. Our lesson objectives are understand and describe the history of the Constitution of the United States, identify and explain the purpose of the Constitution, identify the major authors of the Constitution. The foundation of our American government its purpose and form and structure are found in the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, written in 1787, is the supreme law of the land because no law may be passed that contradicts its principles. No person or government is exempt from following it. The Constitution establishes a form of government that is a democratic republic. That is, we have an indivisible uni union of 50 sovereign states. It is a democracy because people govern themselves. It is representative because people choose elected officials by free and secret ballot. It is a republic because the government derives its power from the people. The purpose of our federal government, as found in the preamble of the Constitution, is to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. In order to achieve this purpose, the Founding Fathers established three main principles on which our government is based. Inherent rights, rights that anyone living in America has, self-government, government by the people, and separation of powers, breaches of government with different powers. Our Constitution, however, has a history itself and began years before with the signing of the Dec Declaration of Independence. During the American Revolution, many delegates to the Second Continental Congress were instruct instructed by constituents to argue for the independence of the 13 colonies from Great Britain. On June 7, 1776, Richard Henry Lee called for a resolution of independence. On June 11, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Robert R. Livingston, and Roger Sherman were instructed to draft such a document. The actual writing of the document was drafted by Thomas Jefferson. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Jefferson revised the final draft. It was sent to Congress on July 2, 1776. After two days of revisions, the final draft of the Declaration of Independence was adopted. This represents the formal separation of the American colonies from Great Britain. The Declaration contains a justification for the American Revolution. It is a unique combination of general principles and abstract theory of government. The fundamental American ideal of government is based upon the theory of natural rights. The opening paragraphs of the document outline the natural rights afforded to all people, calling them self-evident truths, and using them to form the basis of a governmental system. The second portion of the document outlines how England had infringed upon those natural rights, thereby justifying the American Revolution to the world. The Declaration of Independence was approved by the Second Continental Congress on July 4, 1776, but it was not signed until almost a month later. The Congress did not have the approval of all 13 colonies until July 9th. On July 19th, Congress ordered that an official copy of the document be created. The order called for handwritten ornamental script to be used on parchment paper with the title, The Unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America. Using a quill pen, this took some time to finish. Therefore, the actual signing finally took place on August 2nd. As President of the Congress, John Hancock was the first to sign this historic document. He used large, bold script and signed under the text in the center of the page. At that time, a general practice was to sign below text on the right in by geographic location. Using this protocol, signatures of the New Hampshire delegates began the list. Delegates from Georgia, the southernmost state, ended the list. Some of the delegates were not in Philadelphia on that day, but signed the document later. Not all delegates signed the document. The 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence included two future presidents, three vice presidents, and 10 members of the United States Congress. Here is a transcript, transcription of the Declaration of Independence. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind, requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. 
We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, derive their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly all experience hath shewn that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let's fast be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbid his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people, unless those people would relinquish the rights of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly, proposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise, the state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsion within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states, for that purpose obstructing the laws of naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migration hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislature. He has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury, for tr transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English law in a neighboring province, establishing wherein an arbitrary government and enlarging its bo boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments, for sp suspending our own legislature and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny, already begun with circumstances of cruelty and 
perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens, taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fall themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic in insurrections among us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated peti petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We've appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguin consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. And that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may have right to. And for the support of this declaration, with the firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. What next? Take the time to go back and review the lesson on your own. After your review, complete the lesson review for the lesson and submit for grading. Remember, your submission should follow all the rules for standard written English. All submissions must be written in your own words and sources used cited at the end. How to cite sources in APA format. When you reference a source within an APA style paper, whether it is using a direct quote, repurposing an image, or simply referring to an idea or theory, you should insert an in-text citation. The author's surname and the date of publication within parentheses straight after a direct quote. Citationmachine.net will assist you in creating citations.